Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to Higher Chemistry. Uh, this is the last uh, of Nature's Chemistry. Um, if you're at Melbourne, it's the last part of the year, actually. Uh, if you're not at Melbourne and you're watching these, we do things in a slightly odd order here. We teach Unit 1, then Unit 3, then Unit 2. Um, so, I'd like to talk to you today about antioxidants and free radicals. A... Uh, there's two small parts uh, today, but they'll sort of go hand in hand. Let's have a look at SQA 76 and 77 first. That's Scholar 188 to 210. Um, this is about uh, the fact that many flavour and aroma molecules are aldehydes. Uh, and lots of interesting flavours um, can be disrupted by oxygen. What's that got to do with my lemon here? Well, basically oxidation of food and especially edible oils tends to give food what's called a rancid flavour. Um, and if you can stop that oxidation happening, uh, then you can preserve the food for longer. And that's the basis of things called antioxidants. So antioxidants are molecules that stop the food getting organised. because Organised? <laughs> Sorry! Uh, let me try that again. Antioxidants are f molecules which stop the food getting oxidised. Because they themselves tend to get oxidised first. Um, and of course, I'm sure you'll know what the antioxidant in the lemon juice is. It's vitamin C. Uh, you may even have been involved or be involved in that in the future with, uh, with an assignment, once we get assignments back after this year. So, um, antioxidants, uh, basically oxidation of food is a bad thing. So oxidation of flavour molecules... Um, is bad and it makes the food go what is called a rancid so if you can fire in an antioxidant that's something that jumps in reacts with the oxygen before the food flavour molecules do so the antioxidant gets oxidised first uh, if you have already done the section on redox, by the way, you will realise that the substance which is being oxidised is a reducing agent. Um, so that means reducing agents tend to be quite good antioxidants in this case, but that's just a side. So that's basically the first part of the video. Didn't take long, did it? Um, I don't know where an Earth Scholar is dragging all this content out from. Uh, they're being optimistic. Trust me, there's not many learning outcomes there. That's why there's just two pages worth. Let's have a look at the second part of today. So let's move on to the second part of today's menu, the last part, which is something called free radicals. Now, if you're not a physics person, you might not realise that light is actually a stored form of energy. And you definitely might not realise that the energy depends on the colour of the light. Red light, down at the bottom end here, let me try and get appropriate colours. So red light has the least amount of energy stored in it. Uh, up through green and then up to blue and then of course we're off the scale past violet and into ultraviolet which has a bucket load more energy stored in it if you're a physics person by the way you know of course you can go further up here and you can go further down here but that's not for this lesson that's for advanced higher this has so much energy stored in it by the way uh, that it's got enough kick to actually break covalent bonds how about that you can actually break the bonds, especially involved in group 7s to carbon bonds. They're favourites for breaking with ultraviolet energy. Um, there's a nice video from Veritasium on ultraviolet and one from uh, to do with why you should be wearing sunscreen. It's really important. This actually, that's the real reason for suntan lotion, of course, guys. Because you don't want the covalent bonds broken in your DNA. That can lead to bad things. So that's why suntan lotion is incredibly important. Um... So, uh, where are we for this? Yes, the SQA want you to know that ultraviolet light is a high energy form of light and it can provide enough energy to break covalent bonds inside molecules. For example, he says, just picking one randomly, let's go um, Cl, join to Cl, for example. Uh, this causes sunburn in humans, not with chlorine, I know, but your uh, DNA causes uh, sunburn and accelerates aging of the skin. That's basically why you're wrinkly on the areas get exposed to light far more than the areas that don't get exposed to light. That's because I'm very old, of course. Wrinkles? No wrinkles. Um, let's move on to how that is related to our chemistry content. 
So I've got my chlorine molecule here. I'm just about to hit it with some ultraviolet light. And I'm going to break apart that bond. Please remember that a bond, a covalent bond, I'm jump back all the way to third year here, blimey. Was when life seemed so much easier. Here's a chlorine uh, molecule. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, it's basically a shared pair of electrons. We looked at that in this year in slightly more detail because we looked at the fact that there is an attraction here and an attraction here. Bonus points if you can tell me um, what that force of attraction was called. It varies depending on the size of the, the number of protons and the size of the atom and so on. That was called electronegativity. That was the pulling power that the nuclei have on this shared pair. Anyway, I'm raving because what we're going to do now is we're going to break this bond in a way that's never been done in chemistry before. We're actually going to hit it with enough energy to smash the bond apart and you end up with not two chloride ions, not one positive, not one negative ion. You actually end up with two chlorine atoms. These atoms have what are called unpaired electrons. Uh, it's a bit complicated to come back in advanced higher uh, to work out what an unpaired electron is, but for the meantime, let's just say we draw them as a Cl with a dot. That is meant to represent this electron here. So we've created two Cl's with a dot next to them, and these are called free radicals. Free the radicals! Sorry, couldn't resist myself there. Um, these are called free radicals. A radical is an atom with an unpaired electron. That's not a charge. That's just an atom that's really unhappy um, because somebody has stolen away um, its nice pair of electrons. Or broken apart, rather, the pair of electrons here. Uh, and it's desperately looking for something else to fix that situation. Lone atoms, unless you're in groups 8, of course, or 0, whatever you want to call it. If you're a lone atom, then you are not happy. Um, let's have a look um, at the reactions that free radicals can take part in. There are three types of reaction that you require to know about. These are um, three types of reaction that free radicals can undergo. Let's have a look at the overall reaction first of all here. <clears throat> I'll draw it in pink. Um, the overall reaction we're going to do is we're going to take chlorine gas. You're going to mix it with uh, methane. And you are going to end up making... Uh, an interesting mixture of stuff. We'll maybe leave that blank just now. Let's have a look at these three reactions. Let's have a look at an initiation reaction first of all. Initiation is when you take um, your chlorine molecule uh, and then you hit it with ultraviolet and then you end up with two chlorine radicals. So that is initiation done. Initiation as to start things off. Propagation. If you're propagating your plants, you're making them grow. So these propagation steps make this reaction grow. This is actually what's called a chain reaction, in fact, because once you start it, you can't actually stop it until you simply run out of chemicals to react. Chain reactions in the real world are a bad thing because they tend to go ridiculously fast. They tend to be exothermic. They tend to blow things up, and there's which is fun, I know, but not in a chemistry lab. Um, and also they produce a real mixture of products. We'll have a look at that in a second. Let's have a look at the chain reactions. There are, sorry, let's have a look at the propagation steps. My apologies. Uh, let's pick a different colour for propagation. Actually, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the pink for the radical. So along comes a chlorine radical, one of the ones we've just created. And it's in a really bad mood, as I said earlier on. It's looking for something to um, solve this unpaired electron problem. So here's a methane molecule, minding its own business. Remember that, um, remember this is a pair of electrons. Uh, so this is a single electron, there's two electrons involved in this bond. Basically the chlorine comes along and mugs this bond and steals uh, the hydrogen and one of the electrons. So you end up making... hydrochloric acid, and if I stick to my colour code, the radicals will now be in pink. So this has got an unbonded pair of electrons. There were two electrons here, one of them has gone to team up with this along with the hydrogen, but that is left behind, and oh look, we've just made ourselves a methyl radical, which is, frankly, almost as unhappy as the chlorine radical was. So, um, this here 
is propagation reaction A. Let's have a look at what happens next. So we'll draw a line under here. Uh, and if I space it out, if I organise things slightly better, this is what you've just created. So this runs around looking for something to bash into and to solve its unpaired electron problem. And it comes across unsplit molecules of chlorine. So here's a chlorine molecule, again, which wasn't split initially by the ultraviolet. Mind you, it's one business. Remember, there's a pair of electrons in here. This mugs the chlorine molecule. It steals this chlorine and one of its electrons. So you end up making... Uh, if I get the code right here, the non-radical molecules were in orange. So, and of course, you've made a chlorine radical. Now, if you look at what we started with up here, we started with a chlorine radical and a methane. And through this and then this reaction, we've ended up making chloromethane and a chlorine radical. Now the chlorine radical here, so this is uh, propagation reaction B, so there were two propagation reactions. This can go all the way back up to here again, and it can take part by mugging another methane molecule, which produces hydrochloric acid and a methyl radical, which then mugs a chlorine, producing chloromethane and a chlorine radical, which then mugs a methane. You get the point here. That's why these are called chain reactions because they self-propagate. That's why this is called a propagation. Is there any way to stop this, apart from just waiting until all your chemicals are used up, which takes a couple of microseconds? There are, and you're required to know the termination steps. Um, so let's have a look at termination steps. I promised my son I wouldn't actually do a Schwarzenegger impression, but I, I can't guarantee that. I really can't guarantee it. Um, so let's have a look. These were propagations. Termination is there any way to stop this? Yes, there are a couple of ways to stop it. You can take, if you're lucky, a methyl radical. Just realised I've blown my colour scheme here, sorry. We'll bump into another methyl radical. And they will make, I don't know if you could predict what they could make, that's going to team up with that. Oh look, you managed to make a molecule of this. So I actually made ethane. The other termination possibility, so that's possibility A. The other termination possibility is B. And what you could have is you could have a methyl radical. Want to guess what it could bump into to make it to make everything happy without producing anything wild and unreactive? It could bump into a chlorine radical. And you would just make chloromethane. Um, right, a quick recap on that. Now, if you look, if I'd stuck to my colour code, this might have been slightly easier to read. I do sincerely apologise. Let's look at initiation. You start, alright, you start during initiation with a normal, nice, stable molecule, and you end up only making radicals. If you look at the propagation reactions, you end up reacting a radical with a nice, stable molecule. And you end up make, making sorry, a nice stable molecule and a radical again. So there's one of each and one of each. Let's see if that holds true for here. There's our radical. There's our stable molecule. Making a stable molecule and a radical again. Okay. And if you look at termination, we started with two radicals. And you make a stable molecule. That's basically how you'd recognise any of these three stages, guys. So if you run through that again, stables, making only radicals. That's your initiation. Termination, logically, is the exact opposite. It's only radicals making a stable. Propagation's a bit complex, though. You've got a stable and a radical making a stable and a radical. And it's the same here for this other propagation. Lastly, let's have a look at what free radical scavengers are, although that would make an excellent band name, wouldn't it? Well, please welcome to the stage, the free radical scavengers. Maybe that's just my imagination. Um, free radical scavengers are substances added to food, which, just like the antioxidants, 
their job is to get hit by the radicals before the radicals can destroy the rest of the flavours uh, in your food molecules. Also, you find them not just in food, you find them in plastics, cosmetics, uh, lots of stuff where you might get ultraviolet damage. So if you've got the possibility of ultraviolet damage, that's why many crisp packets are mirrored, by the way. Um, that's to keep the ultraviolet out. So if you've got the possibility of ultraviolet damage, you can add a free radical scavenger to your product and it will get hit by the free radicals before the main molecules in your product do. I think that is the end. If I can just check, did I cover all these outcomes from the SQA? Um, pretty much, yep, as far as I can see, that might be the end of the game for Melbourne's chemistry completely. And uh, if you're following on along from another school, I'll try and make, uh, and Melbourne as well, in fact, I'm going to try and go back and make videos for the Unit 2 stuff that we actually get managed to cover in class, but is difficult stuff. I totally agree. Things like Equilibrium, Hess's Law, Redox, and uh, Calculations. But other than that, I think uh, we'll stop it there. And as I said, if you want to pop back at some point in the future, I'll be back with the videos on the missing content. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Bye-bye.